Bless the Lord, bless the Lord, everybody. I'm really here today. I know it has been a while for me to share the word of God to everybody. Uh, because of my work, I was not able to continue. But recently, I get a visitation by by the man of God and the woman of God from from Quebec, and. They they encouraged my spirit to know that that someone was being blessed by the very word of God, and I'm really going. I'm believing that I'm going to find this time to share the word of God, and even though in my time, just to spare that time for to share the word of God, because I believe the grace of the Lord, the anointing, the grace that God have laid in my life. It is not just for me, but it is for others to be blessed by each other. So I want to take this time to share the very word of God to everybody, to to give us hope, to find hope in the Lord, because we are living on a time and a, a difficult time, a time that many people are searching for hope searching for help and they don't even know where to go they don't even know what to do oh my god so i want us to take that time to to sh- to open our mind to come to to, uh, to listen to the very word of god i want us to pray father my god oh lord we are here to you lord the bible said that when the queen of sheba went to solomon for the queen of sheba said that how blessed are your servant to sit at your feet to listen to thy wisdom Father, here we are, Lord, is sitting at your feet, Lord, to listen to your wisdom, mighty God. As maybe, oh God, we'll, we'll listen to the wisdom of God, to the very word of God. For the Bible says uh, that maybe I find good thing, uh, my Lord, uh, we are here, Lord, to heal to your word, uh, to heal to your word, for we are also hunger for your word. Uh, we are in a time that we need uh, the very, very word of the living God. Uh, Hallelujah. Today we are going to share the book of Genesis. And, uh, Genesis chapter 26. And, uh, we are left of the last time I shared. It was in Genesis uh, chapter 25. We are going to share 26 today. Uh, the Bible says that, that in the book of Genesis 26. Uh, the Bible said now there was a famine in the previous famine. That, that had occurred in the time of Abraham. The Bible says so. Isaac went, Isaac went to get to, to Gara, that is the king of the Philistine, and the Bible said that the Lord appeared, the Bible said the Lord appeared to Isaac, you see one thing I've come to realize is this, I want us to know the season and the time we heard, you see we are in a, a we need to come first to understand what is a famine. A famine is a time of distress. A famine is the time of barrenness. A famine is the time of hardship. A famine is the time where all good things are being forgotten. A famine is the time where the kingdom of darkness come to reign over the life over the land. But I want you to know the Bible says that there was a famine in the land of Canaan, the land of Canaan. But the Bible said, beside the beside the previous famine that that have occurred in the time of the time of Abraham. But I want you to understand one thing: the land of Canaan, of Canaan. The, the land of Kalem was the very land of promise which God have given to Abraham. You see, many of you, God have declared a promise in your life. Many of you are enjoying the promise of God in your life. Many of you are enjoying the salvation of God in your life. In the midst of the promise of God, in the midst of the of the enjoyment of of the goodness of God, a famine, a disaster come. 
how many times the many of us that we are enjoying the goodness of God daily we are enjoying the benefit of God daily and suddenly without unexpected without planned without you knowing a family come and takes away the comfort and the joy take away what you have built in the promise of God the Bible says the Lord promised Abraham and the land of Kelm, which is C A N A A N. That was the land of promise. That was the land that God promised Abraham. And that was the very land that Abraham, I believe, that was the place that Abraham sold. It, 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 it was buried because the Lord promised Abraham that I will give you this land. Can you imagine that many of us that God has brought us to the time of promise. There is a promise of God in our life and God has fulfilled a promise and the Bible says Jesus promised us salvation when he died in the cross. Many of us, we are in the promise of God. We are in the, in the realm, in the grace period because of the promise Jesus made to us. We are in the promise, enjoying the goodness of the promise. But suddenly, a famine, a disaster, the kingdom of darkness comes in the promise in the life where you're living that is the challenge they were living in the land of promise many of us today will ask ourselves that god you have promised me this you gave me this land you expect to live a life of abundance. You expect to live a good life. But suddenly, the life you expected is not the life you are seen. The Bible says in the book of sin, in the book of Second Colossians chapter 20. The Bible says that the, the, the Bible said there was a gathering of the king against the king of Shun. The Bible says that, that the king prayed to God. He said, Lord, are you not the one who gave us this land? Are you not the one that drove out the enemy and give it to your descendant, Abraham? And you said that you shall dwell in this land for eternity. How many of you today that God has given you a promise? And you know that the life you're living, you are living the life which God has promised your life. You are living the life of fruitfulness. You are enjoying the grace, the benefit of God. But suddenly, in your life of enjoyment, in your life of, of fulfillment, the, the, the enemy comes and wipe away and bring disorder in the enjoyment, in everything which God has given to you. But the one thing I want to say is this. What will we do? What are we going to do when disaster comes to our comfort zone? What are we going to do when disaster comes in our dwelling place? I want you to realize the Bible says that, that Isaac, the Bible says that, that the Bible says Isaac left the land of Canaan. He left the land and the Bible says he went to water. He went to the, to the land which belonged to the Philistines. You see, one thing is this, uh, just because God promised you one thing, uh, just because you're living in the promise, uh, it does not mean uh, that is the holy place, uh, that is the holy promise God has for you. Uh, you see, there are times uh, that many of us, uh, because we are enjoying the goodness of God in this period, uh, we 
what do we mean? We have become too comfortable with the blessing that God has given to us now. But I want to tell you one thing, that do not be discouraged when you see the things that God has given to you is being blown away. It shows me that there is a greater blessing which is ahead of you. Many of us, uh, we don't realize uh, what God has in store for us. If the famine did not come, Isaac would not have left the land of Caleb. Isaac was dwelling in the land, comfortable, enjoying the goodness of God. But because of the famine, the Bible says he departed from that land. And went to dwell in the land of the Philistines. The Bible said the Lord appeared to him and told him, Do not go down to Egypt. Do not go down to Egypt. That shows me that Isaac had the intention to go to Egypt. The Bible said that the man makes the plans, but God determines the steps. We need to make the law to determine our steps. We need to make the light of God to be the light of our feet. Many of us, we are in this time of difficulty. We are in this time of hardship. We are in this time that everything that you have enjoyed, your comfort zone, your dwelling place, it has been disturbed. It has been shaken. My God, what will you do? Many of us are not searching for better life, searching to live in a better place. But this is the Lord telling Isaac. He said, do not go down to Egypt. I want you to realize that Abraham went down to Egypt seeking for shelter. But the Lord is telling Isaac, do not go down to Egypt, but rather stay on the land which I will show you. And the Bible said that Isaac remain in the land of the Philistines. And I want you to really like to see the deeper, the deeper revelation the Lord gave to Isaac. The Lord said to Isaac that I will give you this land which you had dwelt in. I will give it not only to you but to your descended. The Bible said I will establish it. I will establish it and carry out every vote which I have sworn to. To Abraham, your father. He said, I will make you descended multiplied as the star of heaven. And I will give to your descendants all this land. He said, one thing, oh my God. And the Bible said, and he said, by your descended, all nations of the earth will be blessed. Isaac did not realize. That when he left the land of the promise, when he believed that he have lost everything, when he believed that he have lost the promise, he have lost the best, he never knew that God has the greater. Many of you, you are holding on to the best, but God is saying, I have a greater blessing for you in store. We need to understand that uh, we need to come to the place uh, and trust in God in our problems. Uh, we need to trust in God uh, in our challenge. The Bible says uh, that Isaac become great. Isaac become so great in the land uh, that he was dwelling. He become so wealthy. Uh, he become so so great in the land but before that there was something i want i believe the spirit of the lord is leading me to share right now the bible said that isaac lied to the king and told that his wife was his sister and the thing is that that because of the lie of Isaac, he almost bring the whole land into destruction. He almost bring the whole land to disaster. He almost lead the whole land to sin. He said, I've come to realize that 
if we are not living right with God, if we are not living right, living in holiness and righteousness in God, we can bring trouble to the land we are living in because, because of the lie. Oh, hallelujah. I'm getting a revelation in my spirit right now. The Bible says that if my people called by my name to humble themselves and turn from the wicked ways, I will forgive the sin and heal the land. I want you to know one thing that because of the wickedness of God, of people who are called by his name, because of the wickedness, the land have been polluted, the land have turned into disaster. Because of the sin of Isaac, because of the ways of Isaac, Isaac almost bring disaster upon the land. Do you know that we believe us that we have we have the the capacity to bring destruction and a blessing to the land we are living in. The Bible says that because of Joseph, the Lord blessed the house of Pharaoh. Do you know? Do you understand the authority we have because of us? Because of our life? Because of our lifestyle? Our relationship? We can either be a blessing to the land or being a curse to the land. The Bible says in the book of Jeremiah, Jeremiah said, he said, pray for the land with the Lord and send you. For his warfare is your warfare. Do you understand what the Lord is revealing to us today? That if you don't live right with God, if you are not living in holiness, in righteousness, if the Father is not living holiness in righteousness. You can bring a curse in the household. If the believers are not living in holiness in righteousness, we can bring a curse in the land. Isaac, Isaac was living with Isaac told a lie. If not of the grace of God. The people of that land would have slept with Isaac's wife. And the God was about to bring a curse, a disaster. Can you imagine? Because Isaac was living a lie. Isaac was Isaac did the same thing his father did. If his father Abraham also lied and Holy Spirit almost bring a curse, a destruction. I'm here to tell you, my brother and sister. Today, when the world is turning upside down, if we, the body of Christ, don't rise up and pray, if we don't turn from our wicked ways, we cannot bring healing. God is able to bless the land. God is able to bless this land because of the body of Christ, because of the righteousness. Do you understand what I'm telling you today? The Bible says that when Abraham went to the and lie to the king uh, that this is my sister. Uh, do you know that the king uh, almost slept with Sarah? Uh, you see the nature uh, of the of the kingdom uh, was sinful, uh, but because Abraham interceded, uh, God showed mercy to the land. Uh, I want you to understand uh, that even though the land is sinful, uh, but if there's one righteous man, uh, if there's one man uh, is able to bring deliverance to the land in the time of Daniel because of Daniel the land the land of <coughs> the land was preserved the land God saved the land the king was able to be transformed King Nebuchadnezzar was transformed because of one man do you understand what I'm telling you today that because of the sin of Isaac he almost brought a disaster in the land are you living right with God how is your lifestyle do you understand that your lifestyle can affect those around you. Do you understand? Because of the sin of your 
life. Those around you are being affected. But if you live right with God, if you live in holiness, in righteousness, those around you will be blessed because of you. God blessed the house because of Joseph. My God, my brother and sister, I want you to know one thing. Let us live right with God. Let us live right with God because that are the blessing upon our life. Our life, the life we are living today is not just affecting you, but it's also affecting others. Do you know if you are working in a workplace, even though the workplace is corrupted, but because of you, God can bless that workplace. But I want you to know that when you go away, do you know I want to share a testimony where I used to work in a tower for TV years in the Myriad Hotel. When I was working there, the grace of God, the power of God, the God favor was in that workplace. That workplace used to be full of food. God used to bless that workplace because of me. He blessed that workplace. But do you know that when I left that workplace because of the wickedness of the manager, one time I went there. I went there just to say hi to everybody. Do you be, can you believe almost 60% of the staff and the business was, was gone? I was amazed to see the change that come upon in the workplace. That I'm here to tell you that when we are living right with God, we also have it also being an impact those around you. Hallelujah. So I want you to the Bible says that, that Abraham, that Isaac was blessed. Isaac was blessed. What am I telling you today? Isaac left the land of Caleb. He left the land which was the land of promise. He lost the land because of the famine. He believed that it was over for him. But little does he know that God has a greater plan in store for him. My brother and sister, I'm here to encourage you today. That what you are going through, do not give up hope. God has something even greater than what you are living living Though the life you have been living, it is a poor, it is given to you because of God's prophetic mercy and grace. But God, God don't want, don't want you to hold on. God don't want you to be swallowed up by the challenge of that place. He wants you to move. He wants you to move forward. Move forward. Allow him to lead you because he has a great a plan for you. He has a great blessing in store for you. Oh my God. I just want to encourage everybody. If you are going through the hard time. If you are going through the difficult time. Do not give up hope. Do not give up hope. Because there is a greater blessing in store for you. The Bible says that the struggle, the struggle I'm going through is not compared to the glory that God has in store. The Bible says no eyes have seen, no heart have heard, no mind have imagined for what God has in store for those who love the Lord. That What does that mean? It means that there are some plans of God that we have not seen. There are some plans that we have not heard. There are some plans that we cannot imagine. There are some plans that God has kept in store. That's why the Bible said in the book of Jeremiah. He said, call unto me and I will answer you. And I will show you great and mighty things you know not. There are some plans and great and mighty things that God has kept in store for us. That we do not know. But if we allow God to lead us. We we will come to that place and we will be amazed by the plan of God that God 
God is presented before us. We will be amazed by the things that God, you will say to yourself, where, where have I been all this time? You think that you have been living the best life? Oh my God, there is a greater life that you don't even know. There is a greater mighty life that you don't even know. A life, a life of fruitfulness, a life of abundance, even the time of hardship. There is a great things in store for us. My brother, sister, let's trust in the Lord because there is great things are waiting for you. God bless you and have a blessed night.